Now, next to present is Tom Reynolds, who also happens to be a non-exec with Colin Harrington at Zephyr Energy. So the world is a small one tonight. Uh, Tom Reynolds' day job is actually running Shiroku Energy in his own right. Now, Shiroku Energy is an aim-listed investing company targeting assets within the European energy market. It has recently taken a 50% interest in Energy Acquisitions Group, or EAG, a specialist operating vehicle, which gives Shiroko access to a pipeline of already identified acquisition opportunities within the rapidly going, growing UK anaerobic digestion and biogas market. More of that, I'm sure, from Tom. The company also has legacy assets, including 25% of the Revuma license, uh, which is gas in Tanzania, if I, if I remember correctly, and also a 1% holding an AIM-listed Helium-1. Here tonight to tell us more is Tom Reynolds, CEO at Shiroko Energy. So, um, and listen, thank you very much for the opportunity to come and talk to the London Southeast community this evening. Uh, very pleased to be here and, and really reintroduce Sirocco Energy, which I'm sure some of your constituents have been familiar with through its recent past as it transitioned from solar oil to Sirocco Energy. And really, I'm looking to catch people up here. And there's probably three themes I'd like to uh, be able to listen out for or questions I'd like to answer through the course of this evening's presentation. Uh, the first is why we're doing what we're doing. The second is the how that we'll roll out our plan. And the final thing is what are we building in terms of the business machine? And hopefully if I answer those three questions as we go through this evening, I'll be, uh, I'll be delighted. So moving on to the next slide, very briefly, we've got a disclaimer here, which uh, is important to read at your leisure, uh, but effectively it means that none of us really know what the future holds and that any forward looking statements should be taken into account of un the uncertainty that we all live in. So moving on to the, the first section and what I plan to talk about here is the Sirocco Energy Overview and principally to talk about why we're doing what we're doing and also how we're going to do that. So moving on to the next slide. Sirocco is in itself an energy company in transition. And I think, you know, you can't pick up a paper, you can't look at a website without reading something about energy transition. And Sirocco has been going on its own journey over the last uh, period of time. And what I've tried to do here is just summarize for, for the viewers where the company was, where we are today, and where we're going next. And where we were before, particularly under the banner of Solo Oil, um, the company was uh, invested in a, a fairly diverse portfolio of natural resource assets, typically quite early stage with high potential reward, but, but high risk. And because of the nature, location, and the process involved in those assets, there were uncertain timelines to get to a valuation point and also the associated funding requirement. What we've taken as a board is action to move the company towards a more predictable and manageable future. Um, so where we are, we've made our first investment in the renewable sector in line with the new investment policy that was approved in July this year at the company's AGM. Uh, that was funded by recycling proceeds from the partial sale of our position in Helium One, our historic uh, investment in Tanzania in helium uh, potential. Uh, the Revuma license has been extended and the operational plans clearly established and we'll talk about the Revuma in more detail. And we've started, as people will know that are familiar with the story, a process to monetize those legacy assets further so that, that value can be recycled into the new investment uh, profile. So where are we going? Uh, there's a vision for the company, it's to create a diverse portfolio of real assets, things you can touch, uh, that are cash generative within the sustainable energy space and the circular economy sector. And they will deliver return through hard cash that's generated. And that cash is available for distribution or recycle into purchase of further assets, which I think is really important. So the three to five year vision that's summarized at the bottom of the slide here, very clean, manage the legacy assets for value, recycle that value into new investments in the target classes I'll talk to on the next slide and grow that portfolio value by applying both shareholders equity, recycled cash and uh, asset-based finance 
to create a very significant asset base with strong cash flow. So let's look at the asset types and the classes in the next slide. So fundamentally, we're playing in the energy space. This is a market that the board knows well, and we're focused on three pillars or three target asset classes that it says on this slide here. The first is energy. So these are assets where the primary, fun primary function is generation of energy from renewable or sustainable sources. The second target class is circular. And these assets, basically, the, the fundamental purpose is to recover valuable coal products from waste streams that can be municipal, industrial or agricultural waste streams. Um, and typically what those processes also involve is the reduction of the carbon footprint of those larger systems as you go about that recycling activity. And then the final piece is vector. And these are assets that are involved in storage, transmission and delivery of energy within low carbon systems. Anything to do with battery storage, grid peaking or hydrogen as a class would sit within vector for us. And as I've said already, our strategy is to accumulate a portfolio of real assets that are cash generative, recycling that cash into buying more. And that's what this um, graphic in the bottom left of your screen is showing, that we will select assets, acquire them, leverage them, and recycle cash flow into the next. And I think we can talk about that in more detail on the next slide. And this really is intended to talk to the how. Uh, so how are we going to do this? So fundamentally, we plan to build platform investment businesses uh, in each of the target classes that we just talked about and partner with management that have deep domain knowledge, deep market knowledge in that chosen space, understand where the assets are that can be bought, understand how to drive performance from those assets by optimizing asset performance. We'll help them optimize the balance sheet, reinvest cash flow to both improve the asset and grow value. And then ultimately, it's quite interesting, a couple of questions through the last couple of presentations. You know, we are an investor and we're looking to put money into assets. And if the opportunity comes in the future, turn those assets back into cash on behalf of our shareholders, that's our job to do that. And so, yes, we will sell both assets or indeed the company an evaluation that reflects scale and value at the appropriate point or continue to build by recycling cash. Graphically, that's shown in the slide in the center here, uh, which uh, I parochially refer to as a flying brick, but a better metaphor is a waterfall chart. Um, and really what, what you can see here is the asset base building up uh, assets one through six, uh, adding up to total value, which is made up or funded by a proportion of asset-based finance and debt um, and the light uh, aqua color of equity. We then look to develop upside in the assets by driving better performance, improving performance, um, and grow a portfolio of scale which supports some form of re-rate um, in terms of valuation. The debt still exists, which is the pale blue line coming down, but you can see here the result of that process over a period of time in each one of these value platforms is to create a larger stack of equity. And that's how we will grow value. And as I'll talk to uh, in a moment or two, EAG, Energy Acquisitions Group, that Donald mentioned in the introduction, I think is an absolutely perfect example of this investment model, working in a platform business with an experienced management who really know the space. Very experienced team, strong pipeline of opportunity, great identified path to upside on the assets and the ability to apply appropriate levels of uh, leverage to the portfolio as we go forward. So the how, for me, this slide says it in one slide. So moving on to the next slide, very briefly, uh, for people's reference, uh, this is the board and management of Sirocco. Um, people who are familiar with the story will recognize most of the names and faces on here. Uh, I draw attention to Muir Miller, independent non-executive director that joined us back in uh, late Q1. Uh, he comes to us from Peel, um, and he's got over 20 years experience in the renewables, utilities, and project delivery space. And Muir's been really very, very helpful uh, in, in assisting us and advising us as a wider group as we've transitioned into the space and start looking at new opportunities. And what I would say is that we would expect to build out further competence 
in the area that we are looking to invest in as we go forward. So I'd expect this slide to get more complicated in a good way, showing that we are building up our team to meet the challenges that we have. So moving on to the next slide, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about Tanzania. It's an important part of the company. It's the legacy assets that we have within the company where a lot of historic capital has been invested. And I'm going to split it into two parts. Uh, Ruvuma, which, as Donald said in the introduction, is a natural gas discovery in Tanzania, and Helium-1, which is a helium exploration play also in uh, Tanzania. In terms of Ruvuma, uh, Dialog continues on the sales process that was launched last year, suffered from some delay and deferment because of COVID, along with most of real life for what felt like far too long. Um, and now we're re-engaged with interested parties uh, around Ruvuma. In what we have seen is strong interest from a diverse group of companies. Um, and on the asset, recent issues have really helped instigate and support that interest. A very important announcement from my point of view was that the joint venture secured a two-year extension to the license on Ruvuma uh, with no additional work commitments. The new operator, uh, ARA Petroleum Tanzania, has established a very clear operational plan that takes us through 2022. Um, and they are currently very busy progressing to award of seismic contract, which we expect to be in a position to announce quite soon. And then they're also preparing for well planning for a crucial appraisal well that will be drilled next year. So the project's now entering a period of really quite intense operational activity. Um, and we believe that will unlock value for Sirocco's working interest and for the joint venture as a whole through that de-risking process that we've actually heard the two previous speakers talk about in, in the context of subsurface exploration and appraisal. Um, what we're doing is we're focused on realising appropriate value from these assets. And we're balancing the value that we believe exists there against the future capital costs and operational risk factors, plus recognising that where we are taking Sirocco and how we want to recycle that value into the new investment policy. So the near term priorities are very clear on Ruvuma. We want to progress dialogue with interested parties engaged in the ongoing sale process. Um, we want to maintain strict cost discipline on the asset to both manage our cash resources and make sure that there's an optimum investment being made in the asset. And that means we're supporting the new operator's operational and development plans because they are intended to de-risk the assets and add value in the process, all of which will be attractive to a potential buyer. On Helium-1, uh, I think people who are familiar with the story will have seen our various RNSs on the story. We've been uh, very open about uh, our sales and our intention to sell down. Helium-1 was a private company until December 2020 when it listed on the A market um, and Sirocco has consistently and successively sold into what was a strong market for Helium One shares uh, through to earlier in this year. So we sold 17.8 million of our original 22 million shares when you take account of the options that we exercised and that has realised net proceeds of 3.5 million pounds. We still have 4.6 million shares and Helium One is you know, subject to its own announcement regime, and they've made very clear that they've got lots of really very good high quality data from that first uh, drilling program, and they're now moving on to the second one and planning for that. So we remain very supportive of what the team are doing there and the company as a whole. Obviously, we've taken the opportunity to create some money off the table, and you can see on the graph at the bottom there, the average sale price that we managed to achieve uh, over the last few months. Crucially, I think this is a good example of that recycling proceeds into the new policy. Um, we took some of that 3.5 million pounds and we recycled it into the platform investment in EAG, which basically starts us on a path with that company. And I think that's a really good segue into the next slide. So EAG, our first platform investment, this is the how, and they are operating in the energy space. So on to the next slide. So the EAG investment is a platform business, as I've said. Uh, the intention is that 
EAG will go about their business of growing a portfolio of anaerobic digestion and uh, uh, similar uh, equipment um, over the period of time, buy a number of plants and go up the stairs of that flying brick chart that I shared earlier. It's a private company and uh, we've invested to hold 50% of EAG. So there is a chain of uh, events here. Sirocco has invested in EAG, which will invest to acquire anaerobic digestion plants, the first of which is Green and Generation Limited, or Green and for short, which is the owner of a half megawatt generation plant in County Londonderry in Northern Ireland. And I think it's quite interesting to look at the numbers here. This year's revenue on that plant is estimated to be about £1.1 million, pounds, and on EBITDA, so earnings before interest tax, depreciation and amortisation, a proxy for cash flow of four hundred and £50,000 a year. So these are meaningful building blocks for the portfolio that EAG are trying to uh, construct. Quick word on the investment. It, it's a 50% equity investment, but it's structured as a, a leverage structure. So um, Sirocco has certain rights, uh, including preferred return and the rights to appoint two directors, which is myself and Neil Miller, who will sit on the board of EAG and assist the company in governance as it grows. So the next steps for EAG once we get green and completed uh, is that they're going to look for more assets to buy. And the target asset characteristics are really run very similarly to the asset characteristics that Sirocco wants to buy, which is sustainable, long-term, inflation-linked cash flows, low market risk, and medium to long-term contracted income, and high operating margins with opportunities to grow. So looking at the next slide, I'll be quite brief here. There's a lot of information on it, but it's really an expansion of some of the details we've talked about already on the green plant. Um, I think it's uh, it's a really great example of butter type asset acquisition. Uh, I think what I'd really like to stress on this slide are a couple of bullets that talk about post-completion activity. And the team at EAG have already identified opportunities to improve uh, basically cash conversion within the asset. First and foremost, by looking at feedstock adjustments, which can deliver around 10% improvement on EBITDA on an annual ongoing basis. Um, and then the second piece that we think is potentially much more um, impactful is the looking at the digestive management equipment that can be applied to turn what's left behind in the tank after you've basically digested and taken off the biogas um, and look to turn that into a valuable product. And I think that's a, a really very interesting initiative that we're going to be exploring as we go forward. On to the next slide. Very briefly, why anaerobic digestion and biogas? Fundamentally, it's a very interesting market within our chosen field. It sits straddling between energy and the circular markets that I've talked about already. And this, uh, in the centre of uh, your slide here, you can see that the two products fundamentally biogas, so energy, um, and then biofertilizer, which is the organic material left behind. And I think there's a lot of work that can be done in both of those elements that can release further value. What's particularly attractive about this market is a large installed asset base. So lots of target assets to get after and buy, um, broad population, and I'm sure there will be new developments in the future that we could also participate in. And we're basically working with EAG to identify acquisitions. And we're also working with technology developers on that digestive management piece about how we can monetize or otherwise improve the reuse of the biofertilizer that comes off the back end of these plants. So turning to Outlook and moving on to the next slide, I think one of the points I'd like to make on really here, the main point I'd like to make here is that we're making headway on all aspects of the strategy. We're doing what we said we'd do. We're recycling value from our legacy portfolio, which we're managing as good stewards of shareholder capital and shareholder value. Uh, we are building a new business in the sustainable energy and circular economy space with these three target asset classes. And we've established our first energy platform um, with EAG, which is getting after it. We're also looking at other opportunities in energy, not just in EAG. And what I'd hope to be do, able to do in the future is come back and talk about further platform businesses we're building. In Circular, we've been reviewing 
see the opportunities within the agricultural waste area. Um, and we've also entered into negotiations with a technology provider for the potential uh, provision of digestive management technology. And in Vector, as we previously announced, we're part of a consortium looking at the feasibility of establishing a hydrogen refueling network in Northeast Scotland. So hopefully you can get a sense from that, that we are moving on each one of these target asset classes. We're doing what we said we'd do. So the opportunity for investment, I think is, is pretty clear. This is a strategic pivot to sustainable energy. The JVBDAG provides a strong example of a growth platform, which we hope to duplicate in other areas. Um, it's linked to underlying reliable cash flow and building a low risk portfolio of proven assets that will deliver in the long term. Um, also giving you the opportunity to recycle value into further investments, both from the legacy portfolio, but also with the new cash generative assets that we are acquiring. And really just turning to my final chart, I said I would talk about what we're building, the machine we're building, and hopefully this can simply explain it. And I'm going to start here on establishing the JV platform. EAG is the example. The team with, uh, you know, we're looking for a team with domain knowledge, large and growing asset market, and supportive fundamentals, which allow us to acquire assets, improve those assets performance uh, through adding revenue and improving um, underlying profitability, looking at additional technology levers that we can apply to some of those assets to really supercharge them and, and improve performance further, generating cash flow, which then be recycled both inside that is at, uh, the same joint venture or recycled via Sirocco into a parallel platform business. And it's no coincidence that this is a sort of virtual cycle and virtual spiral. So we grow from here as we gather momentum and build wider business. And as it says on the left, investing in sustainable energy assets, which deliver cash flow for reinvestment. Can't really say it simpler than that. And the final piece is, this, is the very important point, repeat. So hopefully that's given you a sense of why we're doing it, how we're going to go about it, and the business, the what that we're building. And so on the final slide, just thank you for your attention. Hey, Tom, thank you very much indeed. Let me quickly jump in and ask you, in very simple terms, talk us through the different sectors you mentioned there. I think we're probably all a little bit new to anaerobic and biogas sector, the circular sector, vector. What are these things? I really think if there were marketing people, they really uh, need to get a grip because if, they're gonna, if you're going to sell these things into the future, they need better names. Vector, circular, anaerobic and biogas. Tell all. In simple terms, what, what are we talking about here? So I think everybody's got a good sense of sustainable energy and renewable energy. I think people understand solar, wind, power, you know, basically energy. So effectively, the, 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 the high level model here is you're taking a piece of kit, a piece of technology and installation that turns natural processes into energy by one route or another. Um, anaerobic digestion is basically taking organic material and which would normally break down historically in landfills or be ploughed into the earth where it would break down and be digested at a natural timeline. But what you're doing is... In, Not digested in, by animals, but, but naturally well, digested it, by the soil. Quite possibly, but digested in the soil, effectively the natural breakdown of, of organic material. Um, and what we're doing there in an anaerobic digester is accelerating that process um, in, a, in a tank, which you could see in one of the slides with a picture with the domed roof. You add an enzyme and effectively you cook that organic material that would otherwise be waste material, which forces its degradation in a much more rapid way. The methane gas that is embodied within that comes off, you gather it, and it can be injected into the gas grid as cleaned up natural gas. Um, and, uh, or it can be put through a, a, basically a turbine to generate electricity and you export power as your main product. A greenen, as an example, exports power. So basically, you're cooking muck and organic waste to produce methane, natural gas, via a different route that the North Sea did over millions of years, buried under you know, megatons of uh, sediment. And it all counts as green energy. And it counts as green energy uh, because, one, the, the process is a naturally occurring process that, that methane would otherwise be released into the atmosphere, into the environment. And therefore, you're capturing it, you're accelerating it, capturing it, and uh, using it for beneficial purposes. So okay. it's uh, so and it's a circular and vector, those two different areas. 
So a circular is fundamentally about recycling and recovering value uh, where things are effectively wasted or sent away to, to landfill or, or otherwise not used. And there, there's lots and lots of different examples. Circular is the kind of, the circular economy is a sort of trendy uh, name for it. But fundamentally, you're talking about waste management and recycling. So recycling valuable components from waste streams, as I said, whether those are agricultural, uh, municipal or industrial, and making those recycled components available again. So frankly, they don't have to be dug out of the ground or they don't have to be found again. And then finally, vector, um, again, fancy name for transmission and storage. Uh, we all know that the intermittency of the grid being driven by sustainable and renewable energy means that we need more capacity uh, that can balance the grid uh, demand. And that comes in the form of better, more interlinked transmission uh, storage at various nodes on the grid, and also looking at other uh, energy carriers like hydrogen, all of which fit within Vector. Okay, fantastic, Tom. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. When you put it in those terms, it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, Chris Perkins asks, taking you on back, back, to, back to the future, unfortunately, back to Revuma. Um, now that the two-year license has been, has been agreed and the, and the, you know, the, the, and the production program is, is in place, what would, what would your market value be for Revuma? Our market value for Revuma. I mean, I think this is, I mean, we're, we're right in the middle of a sales process. So I think we have to be very realistic uh, uh, about uh, what uh, we're trying to achieve. And it wouldn't be appropriate for me to put a number out there when we're actually actively in conversations with counterparties. I think what we have said in the past is we've taken a, a look through valuation based on uh, what other people have achieved. Um, and that's well documented on both of our presentations and historic presentations and, and RNSs in the past that we have implied or, or backed out a valuation of around $20 million for the Ruvuma based on the Aminex and Ara Petroleum transaction that happened before when Ara farmed into Aminex's interest on, on, um, on Ruvuma. And obviously, the asset is moving forward. We've invested for our capital. And we're moving forward onto an appraisal uh, program, which um, the more we get into that, the more information we have on the asset, the more the asset is de-risked and, and, and understood better. And, uh, and the value of the asset increases as a result. So uh, that process is not lost on us. And uh, it's certainly not lost on the counterparties we are dealing with. OK. How long, how long before you get that 20 million uh, back out of the, the process, do you think? And that, is that an unanswerable question? I think I think I think today it's a tough one, right? Um, and you know, I think we just have to be honest. We are engaged with counterparties that have got both. You know, they are qualified counter counterparties in, in as much that they are funded, they are competent, capable, um, and uh, and they have both an expressed and clear beneficial interest in in getting involved in the project. So they, they tick all the boxes as, as bona fide counterparties as you look at that. Um, we are dealing uh, with a regime that takes a little while to get things done. Uh, we saw that Aminex and Nara's transaction took uh, a reasonable amount of time to Do get things take a wee bit of time to get processed in Tanzania. You know, and, and so, you know, right now I'm, I'm, I'm waffling around an answer to this, but it's because it's pretty difficult to put the pin in on it, right? Not um, a problem. Not a problem. Let me stop you there then. Matt Smith says, Tom, uh, are you tempted to buy back into Helium One? It's, it's a good question. The, 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 the trader in, in me says that uh, the, the market's temporarily uh, taking capital and reallocated it elsewhere whilst Helium One are getting ready. And it, it feels to me that uh, as they get into their second drilling operation, more interest will come back into the stock. And it, it's my not investment advice, it's just my personal view as a trader that that, that valuation is likely to improve, but uh, I would not be buying back in the Sirocco's money. It's a, it's a one-way journey for us. Tom Reynolds, CEO at Sirocco Energy, thank you so much for joining us.